What up, YouTube? Welcome to episode one of the Andy's episode Auto one. Podcast. Today, we got a former football star, oh, no. current automotive <laughs> warranty inspector, as well as a longtime friend of mine. Say hello to Mr. Stephen Conrad. What's up, YouTube? All right, then, so let's talk about back in the day, then, yeah. you know? Like, I got the Merc, you got the Camaro. Yeah. We had the subs in the car. Oh, yeah. You had yours hooked up where? What do you mean? The subs and the Camaro. In the back of the Camaro. I'm saying, where did you go? Or did you oh, do yeah. it yourself? I don't I remember. No, I had some. I had fucking Best Buy do it. Yeah. Or freaking. That's fine. I had freaking Best Buy do it, man. Yeah. I know pretty much it's everyone sh- did. <laughs> but didn't you help me with mine? Yeah. So, yes, we did. Because we, it was a car domain, man. We did it for yeah. car domain back then. I remember the hardest part was the fucking spark plug, not spark plug wires, but sub wires. Oh, the, yeah. The firewall. Me at 16, I was scared <laughs> to drill into the firewall big time, yeah. and I didn't know where. And I, think I don't I even t- remember where we did it. Yeah, I don't remember on mine either. I think one time I did it the rigged way where you bring it around That's just how temporarily. I did it. Up through the freaking yeah. fender. You can't down do that. Somehow, That's down terrible. The door panel. Yeah. Or down the door. Um, what year did you get that sob? Which sob? The or first red one. 2011, I think. When I got my first job, I decided it was a good idea to go out. I mean, the first car that I really liked was a 2004 Saab 93 that Adam Daniel yeah. let me take to uh, Homecoming. Yeah. And then after that, I had that uh, B801 Z28 Camaro. But for some reason, I just like that clean boost to the Saab. What did what do you think was faster between the, the V eight Camaro and the Saab? Yeah, straight line. But the Saab man. had that luxury kind. Yeah, of Yeah, and it was only a two point oh turbo, but man, it was kind of cool. Yeah, just I liked how smooth it was, and it wasn't like prime time luxury, but it was back in two thousand. What year was that? Two thousand ten, two thousand eleven. When I got the red one, the car was an 08. That's where I got it. Was no way. That's so right. nine three. I red. remember. I think yeah. it was pretty fast. Though. It was pretty quick, and I treated it kind of like a Subaru. I thought it was all the drive, but it was front wheel drive, and I took it off road a lot. <laughs> remember going through the pond or the yeah between the neighborhood pond? I think so. Man. But I drove it off. I took it off road. And, but what I liked about it on the road was it was so smooth. Yeah, I remember that too. Relatively quiet. Yeah, and it was quick. It was peppy. Yeah. But I just kind of got into the Saab world, and I looked at, like, I really like Saab 900s, the, like, like 91, the year we were born type, mm-hmm. you know? And I have one of those now that we got to get going in the garage, man. Yeah. Along with the Lincoln. Yeah, Continental. stay tuned for Lincoln Continental videos, <laughs> 1969, restoration, you already know. Oh, yeah. So where did you work at when you bought the Saab? Uh, the airport, I worked at the LS Airport. Yeah. City of LS Airport. And so, you put gas in the planes? I did, I fueled, uh just like Cessnas and small piston airplanes and then I fueled some uh, like super small jets and stuff. Yeah. But it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. I learned about like testing the fuel tanks. Um, I was like the head guy of testing the, uh, doing like a millipore test. I forgot. How long did you work mind. there? <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, I worked there from 2010 to 2015. Yeah. Yeah, when I heard that my daughter was going to be born. Yeah, and that led to the job at uh, at the city, or was that... I had been studying, uh, like, civil engineering, but 
kind of the drafting side for what did I do after the airport? Yeah, at the city. I was a civil engineering technician and I drafted sewer lines, water lines, and storm sewer uh, yeah. systems. And then I moved to uh, public work, or no, 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 it was uh, development engineering. I was like a plans examiner. Yeah. And I reviewed houses and uh, garages, mm -hmm. small commercial projects, nothing too big. That was kind of the advanced class. Yeah. But houses that came in, I reviewed them. I looked at their plot plans and their building plans, and I uh, checked them for like city code, building yeah. code. So enough to give you a general contractor type of I just of like the way things you know? work, man. Yeah. You know? Definitely. I like, like, drafting and, like, under, you know, putting understanding to paper or, like, computer-aided paper and shit. Yeah. Personal. Do you think <laughs> that uh, what you did there yeah. kind of paved the way for what you do now? And as far as... 100%, skills. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really, it was the technical side of things, and also communication. Yeah. And building relationships and talking to people, and learning like all the way down to like email etiquette. Yeah. And stuff, and kind of knowing how to, um, kind of a sales side of things, even though I was working for a city. Yeah. But it really kind of helped me get that technical side of things. So, you eventually did leave the city and I got you, fired. You got, well, yeah. Um, I got fired from the city during COVID. Yeah, and I was going to They sent say us all home and when I got home, I started focusing on things that I wanted to do. Yeah. Like what I'm doing now. Yeah. I started to focus more on that and I, my intake or my output for the city had dropped quite a bit yeah because I was focused because now I was home in my element able to like not have everyone looking over my shoulder and yeah. I was able to think about what I wanted to do with my life and what were you doing that was causing you to uh, kind of screw it's up like, at work what else in your personal I mean, life were doing. you focusing yeah. on because I know you were selling cars, you know what I, I mean? I was selling cars, working Doing on car cars, flips. flips. I started inspecting cars at that time. Yeah, I, I know we got some gigs together. The we garage together. KC, we did we some jobs together. We had a small mobile mechanic business for a little while. And we were getting jobs. And we doing did. Stuff, you know, and we're still doing it. Oh, and yeah. We're still buds and still working together on shit. Oh, yeah. You've left the city and you are starting your own business and you are now basically an automotive inspector. Yeah. So what, so is, what is that? I started out doing pre-purchase inspections and I liked it because I had been flipping cars for a long time mm -hmm. and I had been working on cars with you. I, I never had a mechanic job. I never worked at a shop. Mm -hmm. But I had just, that was like kind of a fun thing to do since yeah. I was what 15 mm -hmm. we were working on cars yeah together for car domain and our own fun shit first mm -hmm. you flipped cars you learned what was what to look for on a car when yeah. you're flipping I got and pretty, that I got, led into the job of being yeah. able to inspect cars. I got good and I think the first company I worked for do I need to mention it? The no I mean, you, I, you well I got this rant, it, it was like 20 17. Yeah. When, I mean, there was pre-purchase inspection stuff going on, but people started to kind of, like these small companies were starting to hire people to inspect vehicles for people that they're going to buy. I, I don't, I mean, was that going on before that? It was probably, but not much around here. Yeah, like women's it up. But. Yeah, and like California was yeah. more, you know what I mean? But I got, I got good at uh, determining if the car was a good buy or a bad buy, bad buy, and then uh, I found this company that hired inspectors 
to go do pre-purchase inspections on cars. Mm -hmm. And I started to do that for a little while. I forget what it was, but I mean, I had been working uh, like a W-2 job, making $20, $23 an hour for a long time, mm -hmm. or, you know, five years or something. Yeah. And I started working these jobs where I was making $60 each or something. Yeah. And I could do five to seven of them a day. Yeah. And it didn't take me nearly as long. And I, I had control of my time. Oh, yeah. That's so huge. I really liked to, uh, I got into that. And then I started finding other companies mm -hmm. uh, to do the same kind of stuff for. I got into mechanical inspections for uh, like extended warranty inspections. Yeah. Um, insurance. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. So that sounds like a lot of different things to juggle at once. As far so, as like working for the man. Different and, companies, different jobs oh, everywhere, you know. Yeah, it does take a lot of um, Do you ever get tired of it or burned out, you know? When I'm overwhelmed, for sure, because I, I stress a lot. Yeah. And... Um, my biggest thing is like I want to. Uh, I don't know. How do you deal with burnout? When you how do I deal do with it? burnout? How do you how do you make yourself do it if you don't want to? You know what I, mean? I kind of go back to the root of it, you know. Really, it's a few different things. Um, the biggest one is I've got a daughter and I want to be successful and show her. Yeah how to power through those tough situations. Yeah. Because um, I know for me, I get burned out. I definitely get burned out. I do a lot of jobs, and I sometimes just want to not do any jobs because it takes a toll on your body over time, and you getting the jack out and lifting up the car and oh, yeah. being underneath it without a lift, you know, the mobile side of things can be difficult for sure. Oh, yeah hard on your body and all yeah. that. If I had to, I guess, pick something, it's kind of the the money yeah. and the... Um, Gotta get that money. The control of my schedule. Like I said with my for, daughter, for my kid, man. I Now that I have control of my schedule, I can choose when and how much money I want to make, mm -hmm. and I can choose how much time I spend with my daughter. Yeah. If I want to take a day or two off, yeah. I'm able to coordinate that. Oh yeah. You know, I can move schedule, move uh, inspections around if I absolutely need to, mm -hmm. to take that time I need with my daughter. Or if I have projects like this freaking uh, place. Yeah. I've been By trying way, to work on this house forever, dude. This place we're recording and this podcast in, built by this guy right here. Whole thing. Yeah. I mean, Contractor slash auto inspector no. right there, man, for real. Lots I of skills garage. this guy has. And because we'll just give y'all a I real like quick on one time. Stuff, we'll let you guys see it all. There's a bunch of crap on the ground. Because getting it's organized. <laughs> Excellent auto shop indeed. Just trying just to set stay this back down man. right proper. A lot of it's my health and everything. I'm just trying to stay motivated. All right. So, how do I deal with burnout? And I was going to ask, what, what would you recommend a high school student to get into the automotive industry, whether it be to repair cars, inspect cars, sell cars? Do you think the automotive industry is a good career field for someone who is just at the beginning? I think it out? depends on the person. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, it's actually a perfect there, segue to the next question I was going to ask, yeah. then, is what type of person is this industry for? Yeah. There's all different kinds of people, and, you know, I have my own kind of niche into this world of stuff, yeah. you know, and... Um, I think it all kind of comes from like uh, a hands-on approach to 
what you want to do. Like you gotta be able to, or gotta want to work with your hands. Work with your hands, kind of. But also, if you want to go anywhere, I mean, I think you can make pretty good money. Should someone start out as a W two employee, or should they try to start their own business, or should you start out in W two and work towards your own business? What do you think? Um. Well, the way that I kind of got into it was playing around with cars. Yeah. Kind of enjoying them. First, yeah. You know? um, car audio was big. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of I had to work on my own car. Yeah. You know, change my own brakes or oil change just to try to save a little bit of money. Oh, yeah. And I ended up liking it. Yeah. You know, I just kind of like taking things apart and putting them back together. Yeah. This, which is why I tinker with stuff, dude. Like, the whole reason I built my garage is because I like just kind of messing around with stuff. Yeah. And learning about stuff and taking them apart and putting them back together. Yeah. And I think that you got to kind of have, if you're wanting to work on them, understand how they're working, uh, inspect them, then you kind of got to have that little bit of mindset sure um, if you want to make money in the automotive industry I'm still trying to figure it out yeah but you can go two different routes you can work for a business or repair a dealership or repair a facility yeah and work uh, a regular career a regular basically. career where yeah. you get benefits yeah and your flat rate where you're making or even better you can, hourly with yeah, good pretty hourly. good hourly, but you're able to get jobs done a lot quicker than what they call for, but you're put, paid for what they call for. Oh, yeah. And you can make a lot of money that way. Or Two hours in one. Straight up. Or if you want to kind of go to the, the other side of things, is um, like what you're doing, the mobile mechanic side of things, where you're taking yeah. control of your own business. I will add that I personally think you should probably start in a shop. Like for me, I started at an oil change place, Valvoline. You learn the basics and then you kind of work your way up from there. I also went to school for it a little bit, but I think it would be much harder for you to start your own business without kind of having that previous background or previous knowledge. Yeah. Of. You, you kind of got in it's one of the industries where you got to know what you're doing sort of to an extent yeah you know what I mean I agree uh, but the electric car thing though like do, where do, you, do you think we'll have a lot of electric cars moving forward I mean I'm sort yeah. of fascinated by the technology I mean I think it's definitely on the trajectory to take over the automotive industry I still yeah. I mean I think it's happening strongly recommend for the new guys to learn about the electric oh yeah whether you're new or you've been in the business for years you're gonna have to learn it eventually if you plan to stay I do want to mention this YouTube channel Weber Auto this guy John Kelly when I was studying the ASEs for auto and manual transmission the electric motor in the Tesla and other electric models is very similar to just a transmission with electric motors that spin it instead of an engine. And when John Kelly took all of that stuff apart, it really helped me to understand. I mean, I'm not an electric car expert by any means, but it just kind of helped me conceptually understand what's going on in there. And if you're a new guy kind of starting in the industry, I would definitely recommend you know getting started in the electric if you can as well but uh anyway i appreciate you doing this podcast sure, with man. me even though we've had some uh recording difficulties, difficulties. this is our uh, first <laughs> podcast my first time recording one his first time my being first on time. one but uh please like comment and subscribe we will see you next time <laughs> and uh I'm trying to hit 3,000 subs by the end of 2024. If you could help me out with that, I'd greatly appreciate it. And otherwise, stay tuned for many more awesome videos on the Andy's Auto YouTube channel.